Want help to grow your business? Download Bryn, the world's first business advisor in your pocket. To find out more, visit Bryn.ai or search the App Store today. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Teach Me Tech. My name is Pete Quist, and I'm joined once again by the wonderful Laurel Gray from GetDigitalFlow.com. And this week, we are going to talk about how to get started with Calendly. Laurel, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me back again. Oh, look, you're more than welcome. We've uh, had some people on the old social media using the hashtag Teach Me Tech, and they've enjoyed some of your previous episodes, so we thought we might as well get you back in. All right, thanks. Okay, so we should get cracking. Teach Me Tech, what is this show all about? Well, we take new and complex and interesting ideas and tools online. We break them down and we make it as simple as possible for you to actually learn them and implement them at home. So what I want to let you know before we get started, two quick things. First of all, this session is highly practical. So if you've got a second screen at home, whether it be a tablet or another laptop, you can actually implement what we teach in real time as we go along through this episode, which is pretty cool. The second thing is we want you to ask and share. Like we just mentioned, the hashtag is Teach Me Tech. Jump onto your favorite social platform, even if it's Google+. Plus. We will accept Google Plus, won't we? Absolutely. And use the hashtag Teach Me Tech to get involved in the conversation, not just with Laurel and myself, but also other people out there in the Business Blueprint community that are watching this episode. So you can tell us some of your good experiences, some of your bad experiences, how you've implemented things in your business, or maybe you've implemented something else. We'd love to hear about it. We want you to get involved online. So. Let's take a look at what we are going to cover on today's episode. So we're going to take a look at why you need an appointment booking system in your business. We're going to look at a quick overview of the Calendly website and how to get started. And if you don't know what Calendly is, don't worry, we'll get to that too. How to link your personal calendar to Calendly to avoid schedule conflicts. Boy, it's a tongue twister, by the way. Mm. Configuring how people are going to book in time with you how to configure invitee notifications, how to set up reminders for the invitee to ensure a higher sharp rate, customizing your availability options, and finally, making the most of Calendly to better manage your personal time. So without further ado, let's get started. We can't afford any other sound effects. <laughs> so Laurel, let's kick, th kick things off, not kicked things off, let's <laughs> kick things off. Uh, Calendly, first of all, why do you need an appointment booking system in your business? But probably the first question is, what the heck is Calendly? Well, as you mentioned, Calendly is an appointment booking system. And there are a lot, a lot of these on the market at the moment. Um, so that you've got a bunch of choices uh, to choose from if you are in the market for an appointment booking system. And basically, it's going to automate when your customers can book in time with you and your team in your business or they can also book in some personal time with you as well. Um, so basically saving you tons of time and energy by having a system in place to do all that booking for you. Now this is another fantastic Teach Me Tech episode this week because uh, as everyone knows out there, sometimes I'm personally on the front line going out there and learning the tools and tricks, but sometimes like with Calendly, I'm actually the one getting taught as well. So hopefully I'm going to ask some good questions about, the, uh, about Calendly and, and how it all works. So Laurel, tell me what type of businesses could benefit from Calendly? I mean, instantly I think of any business that takes mm. appointment bookings. So, you know, like dentists, for example, would take bookings. That'd work, but I'm mm. sure there's a lot of other people that could benefit from this. Yeah, actually any kind of business uh, or business owner can benefit from a having a booking system in place. But of course, we often will go straight to service-based businesses, right? So dentists are one, consultants, hairdressers, Anyone that maybe would take a phone call usually, or potentially maybe would take an email, have some correspondence to book in an appointment, and either they're using their own personal time or they're using the time of a receptionist, someone that they have to pay to make the appointment. Okay, so I guess coaches as well could mm. fall into this yep. uh, bracket. A anyone that provides a service, and I think of you know, my business where, for example, I need people to book in for introductory calls, I need people to book mm -hmm. in for uh, coaching calls. There's all kinds of things that I could use this for as well, and I'm not using Calendly yet, so I'm pretty excited about this one. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. And it's important to note too that you can just book in one-off appointments. 
So if you have a customer that's maybe unsure, you can allow them to get started with just one appointment. And then if you do have a coaching business or some kind of recurring need to have bookings, that can be arranged as well. Okay, so what about if I've got a team, let's say I've got multiple sales representatives in my team or something, is this something that I can look at there as well? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we always recommend that we start off booking the business owner in or maybe one person in the team to kind of test out the system at the start and then probably won't have time to cover it today, but we will cover eventually how to add in other additional team members. Excellent. So we'll actually look at Calendly over two episodes, which is something that I'm pretty excited about as we've kind of been looking at with most other tools at the moment. We do a how to get started with and how to get more out of. Today, we're going to cover off the basics though, aren't we? Yeah. And how far are we going to take people today? Um, basically, we're going to walk through the entire setup process because there are quite a lot of little nitty gritty details that you have to navigate your way through. So by the end of, of today, you should be able to book in your entire first event. Okay, so we kind of touched on the reasons as to why people need an appointment booking system in their business. But if someone comes to you at getdigitalflow.com and they say, you know, my booking system is all over the place, how do you explain this to them? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, I probably wouldn't start by explaining. I probably would begin by letting them know that it's not really about just the booking system and it's often not really about the solution. It's never really about the stuff uh, in your business. It's about changing your mindset and the way that you operate in your business. So often when customers come to me and they say my appointment booking system is all over the place, what they actually mean is my calendar is all over the place. And so I always encourage people to sort of take a look at everything that's happening in their calendar and first of all, make sure that they get everything that they're doing completely listed out. So that might include travel time, whether you're driving or taking the bus, time for lunch, time for actual administration work in your business, and just getting all of those ideas out of your head and in your calendar first. Okay, so we're talking about not only is this important for people to actually schedule their business, but you're saying this is important that people can actually schedule their life. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. And the only way an appointment booking system is going to work with you is if you have an idea of when your availability is. Great. And they talk about, you know, organizing calendars with r regards to if you're trying to fill a, a glass jar mm. and you've got big rocks and then small rocks and then sand, you always put those big rocks in first. So, you know, we're hoping that we're not going to teach people how to organize their life today and how to put no. those big rocks <laughs> in first. But this is once you've got those big rocks in, this is kind of pouring that sand in to make sure that everything fits perfectly within your schedule to get the most out of your day. Absolutely. And you know, for some people, that's even just a huge step, right? Just getting a little bit of awareness around well, what is it that you're actually doing during the day and how do you spend your time? Great, I'm mm -hmm. looking forward to getting some organization myself. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's take a quick overview of the Calendly website and how do we get started? Oh, easy. Are you ready? Okay, I'm ready. Okay. I'm strapped in, seatbelts on. Awesome. So if we head over to the Calendly website at www.calendly.com, You'll notice that they have a nice, beautiful landing page here. You Says love these clean and simple landing pages, don't you? Absolutely. I like everything clean <laughs> and simple because you might as well enjoy and love the tools that you're using. Fair enough. All right. So you can scroll down and check out some of the features of Calendly and check out the landing page here. Um, but we're going to run through basically a whole demo here of how you can set up your account from the outset. But if you ever are concerned about the features, you can click through and check those out and also check out the pricing. Okay, so what we're going to look at today, this is a free version, correct? That's right. So the version is free for 14 days. You get a completely free version. And then after that, you're able to downgrade to a free version, but you have slightly less functionality. Okay, great. No problems. So mm -hmm. as with everything that we teach, you know, we always mm -hmm. look at the free version. So that's what we're going to cover off. We'll mention yep. what's involved in some of the paid versions, but mm -hmm. by no means is this some sort of advertisement. We want to give a, a fair and unbiased kind of opinion of the tool. So Yep. And I will say after looking at a plethora of different scheduling solutions, there aren't any that are completely free for all the full features. So you are going to have to pay for this type of a service. Of course, but mm. uh, if we want to get started, this is a great way to do it. So yep, we've great. So the website looks pretty straightforward to kind of browse around and see what we can learn. Mm. And then how do we get started? All right, it's really, really easy. All you have to do is click the sign up button in the upper right hand corner. It's pretty and straightforward. Very easy. <laughs> and 
like we have seen before with Asana, mm -hmm. you're able to sign in using s what's called single sign-on. So if you've already got a Google Apps for work or a free Gmail address, or alternatively, an Office 365 account, you're able to log in directly by clicking on one of the buttons. Great, which Kay. I love. And they don't ask you for a credit card up front, which is also quite beneficial as well. I, I know a lot of people that kind of get scared off if they have to enter their credit card even for a free account. So yep, I always like that. Absolutely. Okay. Um, I like that too. That's a good point. So we're using a Google Apps for Work account. So I'm already logged into Google Chrome using that account. So I'll just be able to click Sign Up with Google. Great. And then we click that button and it comes up with our Google authorization, which we're used to seeing. Mm -hmm. So we've got John Doe here from Demo Company, our friend Colin Firth. Good old Cole. Oh, there he is. I might just pause on the screen for a while to contemplate life. So click Allow. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to authorize the application, and that means that you never have to enter a password or any username or login details for Calendly. Great. Okay. So uh, that only takes a few seconds to allow, and once, once it's agreed to that, obviously, we're going to be able to get into the website and take a look at how we're going to set things up. Do we have to set up everything from the start with Calendly, or is this one of those websites where we can take it, you know, over the days or weeks or whatever we might require? Mm. That's a really good question. Um, you can, oh, took a little bit too long. We'll have to try that again. Um, this is definitely a situation where you could just set up Calendly partially, and then you'll be able to go and create more event types and customize more advanced settings in the future. So we can just do the basics. So we can see there that the calendar, the Calendly is loaded now. So we're logged in using our Google account. And uh, I can see it hasn't got a huge amount of things for us to choose from here. Uh, no. <laughs> okay, so what it's do we do? Very simple, which is a big part of the reason why we're recommending this tool because you don't need a lot of technical expertise to either book or to set up the system. Great. Okay. Right. So it says choose your Calendly link. Now you have an option here to either, if you're if you're a sole trader, you could potentially use your business name here um, and do that, or you could set it up using your own individual name. Okay. So it depends on whether or not you're going to be collaborating with your team or not. Okay. Mm. So what are we going to do today? So let's just do a test name. Okay. Belinda Rothschild. What do you think? Love it. I apologize to any Belinda Rothschilds out there. <laughs> We're just going to pretend here. I, I think using Colin Firth, maybe we'd get too many bookings. Maybe. What do you think? Okay. All right. And it's automatically populated here with our time zone. And that's really important that you set that correctly. Okay. Because that's going to integrate with your calendar. Yep. Perfect. So we're confirming that now, and that'll load our next page, which helps us on how to get started. So we can watch this introductory video if we're a little bit stuck at this point, or you could just watch another episode of Teach Me Tech and figure it out. Yeah, and, the, and this introduction video is great if you have a little bit of time and can just sit through and watch. It gives you a couple of extra little tips. Great. So we recommend doing that, and afterwards, clicking on Go to Your Dashboard. And once we click on that, this brings up our Calendly dashboard. Yep. And they make it really easy for you to see what the events look like. So we've got here on the left a 15-minute meeting set up as an example, a 30-minute meeting, and a 60-minute meeting. And we'll go into how to actually configure these events a little bit later. Um, the first thing that I would always do is start to configure the main account, however. So like with most cloud applications, in the upper right-hand corner, you can access your profile by clicking on the little head and the link here. And it gives you the option to either copy the Calendly URL, which is calendly.com forward slash Belinda Rothschild, our made up name. Um, and you can also have a link to email that Calendly URL, which you might not ever use that. Um, and it allows you to go in and have a look at the calendar connection, which we'll do in a bit, and also have a look at your account settings. Okay, great. So it's easy to click through those and check them out, and we'll uh, we'll do that later on, but uh, let's move on to our next point, which is how do we link our personal calendar to Calendly to avoid schedule conflicts? That's All right. Question. To continue enjoying this presentation, download Brin, the world's first business advisor in your pocket. To find out more, visit Brin.ai or search the App Store today.